Now, I, I think I'd just like each of you, um, if you could, to talk in a few minutes about what you consider the significance um, of uh, Obama's election uh, for, for your country. Um, and I guess I'll start with you, Stephen. Steve Schreiben. <laughs> Stephen. I was just thanking everybody for, the, for, for your president-elect. And, and, and just concluding by saying that, I mean, he ran for office on a very progressive agenda, as you know, of health care reform and energy independence and redistributing wealth in society. And, um, and now he will deliver on that. I mean, it will be a tall challenge, and he's obviously called upon all of you. And you'll have assistance from friends outside the country in, in, in building the base of support and creating the political space he will need to actually move that agenda forward. The, most Canadians uh, supported uh, Barack Obama and favored him as your choice. I mean, the irony of that, or the paradox, is that we recently had an election in our country which didn't have the same happy result. I mean, we're still mired in, in the malaise, I think, that afflicted you for, uh, for quite a long time and elected uh, a conservative government. Uh, we have a four-party um, uh, system, uh, the Green Party and the, the Bloc Québécois and the NDP and the Liberals and the, and the Conservatives, that's five. Um, and uh, so the, 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 because we have a first-past-the-post system, the Conservatives form a government, a minority government, with about 36 or 7 percent of the popular vote. Uh, but for the first time, I think, in, in, in Canadian electoral history, I think less than half uh, of the eligible uh, voters in our country uh, actually voted. So we have a, we have a week, uh, we're, we're, we're changing places with you because we've always had, we've always had more than 60% of the people come to the fo polls in a federal election. So, um, you know, we're in a, a kind of a, a strange a predicament in, in, in being very happy about, you know, the development south of the border and having to suffer under a, uh, a weak uh, conservative political administration in Canada. It, it, it's obvious that the um, neoliberals and the free traders were prepared for this outcome because the headlines in our national newspaper, the Globe and Mail yesterday, announced the fact that Canada had already made an offer, tabled some proposal, the details of which weren't revealed, uh, to the Obama uh, group, it would be administration, uh, offering to resolve uh, the United States problems of energy independence by supplying it with oil, um, but from the tar sands. And in response to which, uh, we would have a climate change pact which wouldn't rule out of bounds this extravagantly unsustainable way of producing oil. I think it, I, someone in here can probably correct me with the stats, but I think it takes about a ton and a half of aggregate and three or four barrels of water and enough natural gas to heat your home even in uh, Minnesota for about a week or 10 days in, in the winter to produce a barrel of oil from which will be distilled enough gas to get your Hummer to the two-thirds. <laughs> Most people don't know that Canada's uh, the United States' largest supplier uh, of oil. We're producing about a million something barrels a day from the tar sands. That's the ramp up to almost three million by 2015 and and the security and prosperity partnership agenda is to increase that uh, to five million barrels a day by 2020. I, I'm embarrassed to live in a country that has such a craven relationship with the United States uh, and to have been dragged down into this vortex of neoliberalism that began with Reagan uh, and Mulroney in our country. I mean, we've had over 25 years of this terribly destructive and unsustainable uh, policy agenda. Uh, so hopefully we'll be now raised up by, um, you know, these wonderful and pro progressive um, uh, turn of events in your country. So congratulations. And um, I'm very excited about what lies ahead of us. And I know that ITP will be a critical part of that. Okay. <laughs>
That was seven minutes. <laughs> Okay, good evening. I'll be very simple and uh, very, very brief because I do not have to de-emotionalize uh, by a relationship with the uh, U.S. like somebody I know who spoke before me. Um, you should come to our board meeting sometime. <laughs> um, actually, for a long time, last half century, we were saying that, that when U.S. Uh, the sneeze, Japan and Korea get flu. And then uh, Japan, Korea, and the Filipinos get together. We always said, have you nominated yourself to become 52nd states of the uh, United <laughs> States? No, no, we are the first, you know, you are the next. So we, this is very daily conversation of us. So you can imagine last three, four weeks on the uh, top newspaper page, there was always, even a very, very small article, there was always the news about your presidential election. How many of you know who is our prime minister in Japan now? <laughs> you see, this is how important for us also, as a Japanese, that and you, I want you to realize that your decision, I really congratulate, your changes that you made has been celebrated by all over the world, even us beyond the Pacific, that was a great uh, change that you made and great decisions that you made, and I really congratulate you. Um, so, for us, the implication is very, very big because your administration has changed and our conservative administration have not changed. They were supposed to be going to the election about two weeks ago, but it did not happen. So our conservative ruling party is still there, who are just like pirates, keep on saying, why did you, do you deregulate this? Why do we have to send our defense force, who are not supposed not to fight, to Iraq or to support the uh, war against terrorists? All answer we get is because of US-Japan Security Pact, because we have to follow our big brother, President Bush, it's not there. Big Brother is gone. <laughs> you know? So, what can we do? And these, you know, small brothers, we don't, they don't even have mothers anymore. <laughs> uh, they can say, oh, this is house decision. So, um, we really hope we, th uh, we will go on election and do you know, follow Americans who made change. We can make change and we can overturn our Democratic Party. Japan can take the uh, ruling party's position. Then we can always start the process of democratic bilateral decision making. And also, I think I also want to congratulate you for your changes made and the uh, people at the, uh, I don't like to use that word, but I would say, like a bottom of society, where maybe for many of them, because of many of you worked hard, the first uh, ballot they went, first voting they made, made change. This is great. Like uh, your voting and balloting system is different from ours. So it was very complicated for us to understand. For, for us, it's automatic. You just go there show the face and say my birth date or something, then I get vote. I don't have to make even decision that I have to vote and I have to register. But you have to convince last two, three, I know the Democratic, Democrat, Democrats Japan, they started maybe eight, four, five years ago to convince all the absentee ballots, everyone in Japan. And then these people who were so confident that they could make changes. So definitely, together with you, you are ready to make bigger changes. <laughs>